two of the most powerful concepts in operating systems are preemption and context switching. They give the operating system much more control over how processes execute. The time quantum is the smallest unit of time in scheduling. The time quantum determines how often the operating system will interrupt and decide what process to run next. Many operating systems, particularly real-time operating systems, allow the designer to set the time quantum, and this is a fairly important choice. The time quantum should clearly be smaller than the period of the fastest process in the system. Otherwise, the operating system won't be able to control the execution of that process. So context switching uses a timer to interrupt the currently executing process periodically. That returns control from that process to the kernel. The timer interrupts every time quantum. At that point, the kernel decides what tasks to run next. Context switching is the process of changing execution from one process to another process. We can use a UML sequence diagram to understand the basic procedure. The timer interrupts and calls the scheduler. It then decides what to run next, in this case, task one. The time quantum is the time between timer interrupts. So with the next timer interrupt, the scheduler runs again and decides what task to run now. In this case, it's task two. At the next time quantum, the scheduler runs again and decides what task to run. It can decide to run the same task as in the last time quantum, which it does in this case. The timer run ups again, runs the scheduler, which then decides what to run next. And in this example, task one is what it chooses. The operating system assigns every process to one of three states, waiting, ready, or executing. A process may be waiting because its data isn't ready. So for example, a digital filter needs the next sample. Before that sample's ready, it has to wait. Once it has its data, it becomes ready. But only one process can be executing on the CPU at any given time. We can use our UML sequence diagram to illustrate the different states of the processes. The timer interrupts, runs the scheduler, which chooses which process to run next. In this case, task one. We illustrate the fact that task two is ready but not running by using the white box. On the next interrupt, the scheduler chooses task two. So now task two gets the colored box to show that it's running and the white box in task one shows that it's ready but not executing. And so on for the rest of the execution. Now let's look at how we can implement context switching. We can't do it in C. We have to use assembly language. The values of all the registers in the CPU are critical to maintaining the correct operation of a program. We call the set of registers and their current values the context of a process. So a context switch changes the values of the registers from one process's values to another process's values. The activation record is the data structure we use to remember the register values or the context for a process. We can't implement this complex procedure using high-level languages like C. We usually use assembly language to build a context switching program. This sequence diagram illustrates the basic context switching process in the freertos.org operating system. When the timer interrupts, it calls v preemptive tick. That first calls port save context, which saves all the current registers. It then calls v task switch context, which decides what's run next. And then it calls port restore context to restore the registers for the new process. Here's the code for v preemptive tick. You can see it calls port save context. Then it calls vtask increment tick, which performs some housekeeping functions, updating some registers. It then calls vtask switch context to choose what process to run next. And then it calls vport restore context to restore the values in the registers for the new process. 
but it's important to remember that port save context and port restore context aren't regular C functions. They're actually implemented as macros in order to control the assembly language in these functions. Here are some important parts of the code that saves context. It first saves the PC and the status registers. It then saves the rest of the registers. TCB stands for context control block, which is another name for an activation record. So PX current TCB is a pointer to the activation record for the currently running process. All the register values, including the PC and the status bits are stored in that, in that record. Here's the code for restoring context. PX current TCB now points to the new process that's going to run. So the code first restores all the basic registers, then it restores the status bits, and then finally it restores the program counter. When it sets the program counter to the value in the TCB, then the CPU changes execution to that newly running process. At that point, we've completed the context switch. To summarize, a timer is used to interrupt the currently executing task and return control to the operating system. This is known as preemption. When the operating system switches from one task to another, this is called context switching. We can't implement context switching using high-level languages like C. We have to use assembly language.